Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for inviting me here in Riga. I'm Mauro Martino. I come from Cambridge, US. You know, and this is exactly the wrong way to start the TED Talks, <laughs> because before to come here, uh, two weeks ago, I decided to, to look around uh, what other people say ab about uh, TED. Chris Anderson, he just wrote a beautiful book, TED Talks. And I read this book, and I was not enough. I, I decided to buy all the books available in Amazon in my uh, bookshop close to my house in Cambridge about these topics. And uh, I do that all the time, because uh, I really love books. Uh, this is a, a, a video that uh, I shoot for you to just show to you how many books I just bought in the last uh, six months. So constantly I, I buy a book about different topics and uh, you can see I work in the area of big data, I'm the area of interaction design and uh, there are so many books about machine learning and books by, made by Laszlo Barabasi, uh, William Britton, David McKinsey, uh, Kandinsky, Kevin Lynch, uh, uh, Laura Antonelli, so many authors that really are part of my life. Bruno Munari, I, I was studying in Milan, in a Polytechnic of Milan. So uh, why books are so important? I think if you look at my collection of books in my last six months, you can see some topics that emerge, like there are books regarding machine learning, artificial intelligence. There are books that talk about user experience and uh, information design, graphic design. And of course, this is my favorite collection, you know, the column regarding the field of data visualization. So I come from the field of data visualization. And if we look uh, a little bit deeply inside, uh, we, can, um, we can see in every single book um, a story that is very well done about, uh, I don't know, statistical model, computational analysis. Anyway, uh, inside of every single book, there is something magic that we don't really see so well. So what is this? This is just uh, an analysis uh, of the first page of uh, the book Why Information Grow from my friend Cesar Hidalgo. Uh, it's, I think it's very appropriate uh, topics, why information grow. And you can see um, so many details emerge from the analysis of just this page. And we can observe some emotional analysis, and we can see there is a lot of anger, disgust, and a lot of emotional range. And this is very normal, because this is an introduction page, where the author had to really present deeply emotionally the topic that you're talking about. This is the way the computer are looking the book. So a big collection, my big collection of book is uh, this for my computer, and for your computer too, so if you use the, the right uh, algorithm. So a lot, a lot of uh, uh, content that uh, the system highlights because are particularly uh, interesting. And uh, there is an interesting way to observe with a high of uh, natural science, all this connection between topics and many type of entity. You can see all this connection emerge spontaneously because the computer recognizes all this content automatic. Sometimes two books are related because there is the same topics in a different or multiple topics in common. And it's very obvious to find uh, location, organization, company, and uh, of course uh, people. But uh, if you and one person can easily identify connection between a book to another, but if you're thinking about the, the thousands and thousands of connection, a connection that can emerge by this analysis, you can see that spontaneously some uh, uh, cluster emerges, some the book start to be together, close to each other, because they, they have many entities in common. This is only possible when you have an intelligent uh, algorithm able to really identify different type of entity inside. Without uh, artificial intelligence, without this uh, machine learning system, without uh, uh, language processing, we are not really able to have uh, the big picture about uh, the interconnection of uh, topics that emerge from my book collection. And I think this is a very common problem for everybody, not just for me. Okay, for me, um, it's particular, maybe I'm too, too much obsessed uh, about this uh, behavior to buy a book and read the paper every time they have to resolve some technical problem. But, you know, we are full of... Uh, our brain doesn't work really in the way that we dream. Sometimes we are some bias, some cognitive bias. And when we use artificial intelligence, maybe we can resolve this bias. Let's see some example. Like, if we are looking at the sky, we are, looking, we are able to image Andromeda, uh, Cassiopeia, all this beautiful, great picture. 
that uh, are just a projection of our uh, um, fantasy. Because we are really good in identifying pattern, but too much good. We find pattern everywhere, still when pattern doesn't exist. So we have so many types of bias. Sometimes we project, uh, we project uh, on top to the other people that are in front of us our personal emotions. So I feel good today, I feel optimist, and I'm able to see this uh, positive uh, um, characteristic around all the people around to me. So, so many uh, aspects of our life uh, really match uh, uh, with our capability to absorb information from outside, interpret this information, but so frequently, this interpretation is wrong. Let's do an experiment together to see if we are, you are able to, uh, no, to follow this player, they're wearing white t-shirt, and count how many times they pass the basketball each other. So let's see together the video. Count, because after I will ask you <laughs> if you find the right number. So it's, it's, it's very old experiment, but still I think it's very interesting to see. So the basketball is, is, a, is, is okay, maybe the video is also the color not so vivid, but so how many times? Guess a number. 16. Is the right is 15. So very close. But the point, uh, did you see the gorilla? Everybody saw the gorilla? Yeah. <laughs> Many of you, especially if you watch this video for the first time, so I'm so still impressed about this experiment because the first time I saw this video, I was completely unable to see the gorilla. I watched two times. I said, oh my God, there is a gorilla there. But if we use a machine uh, to look in this uh, video, there is no problem because we can uh, activate some simple system that identify is there a woman, is there a man in the video, and when there is a gorilla, the system identifies the gorilla. It doesn't care. It doesn't, it's not focusing a goal. So the machine is just a, a huge collection of algorithms. So, and when the gorilla leaves, that's it, the gorilla leaves. So the point is, OK, maybe the gorilla is a very easy task. But let's see something more complicated. Like a few weeks ago, I was in St. Petersburg. And this is just a few minutes walk. Um, on the street, uh, and you can see how many details the, the computer is able to identify. In this case, the algorithm is setting to identify people. So, but I have some question for you. Uh, how many people are in the street? Can you count? Of course not. It's boring. We don't want to do. How many people are dressing a blue T-shirt? I don't know. So there are so many inform information, details that emerge around the, our world every day, every second, that we don't care about because, uh, you know, we are able to resolve a task, we are able to uh, talk with a person, but uh, we cannot count all this information, especially we don't really care. But uh, maybe so many interesting things emerge from this translation of this uh, information in a data. So this unstructured information, their video, their text, from our daily work. You know, we produce all this amount of information, and we lost this information. We don't really use it. And maybe something can emerge from using this information. In my daily work, I'm uh, interested in uh, healthcare problem. So uh, at the moment, I was, I'm working in Watson Health. So one of my problems is to try to identify from a huge collection of uh, uh, scientific paper, is there some interesting correlation between uh, some uh, uh, gene TP53 and some disease, diabetes, or gene TP53 and disease and neoplasma. So in what way are I using so I want to give you a very pragmatic example. In what way are you using all this amount of data that I can extract by using uh, this uh, technology? So let's see, let's see an example of my daily work. So I'm building this interface. So I'm able to, to say that this uh, disease, autoimmune disease, uh, is uh, related to this uh, fourth gene. And if I look inside, discover this gene, this is related with this three gene that I saw before. So it's a very interesting starting point. So if I look in this gene, and I, I try to understand the relation between this gene and the protein that are related with this gene, maybe I can start to find a drug that is able to, uh, in, in some way, interact with this gene. So let's try, this is an interface where you can try different type of drug available in the market. Cisplatin is a type of 
of drug that really is related with this type of, uh, with some protein that is connected with this gene. And what is the result? The result is uh, I can find in a direct way a connection between a drug and a way to interact with this gene. And maybe this will be the starting point to resolve uh, this type of disease. Okay, it's very complicated. I don't want to talk too much about this uh, type of problem with you. But uh, let's find another example that may be uh, more enjoyable, something related with, with us. What about explore um, TED Talks? No, it's like uh, out, out, out. In a TED speech, talk about TED speech. I like this type of joke. <laughs> so let's use a TED Talk like a, a database to explore together. So. Essentially, if we explore all this TED Talk, we can see, uh, probably if you are here, you are appassionated about TED Talks, so you know that many talks are in some way link each other. They talk about the same, the same no, topics, uh, or the authors come from the same field. So, this is an interface that we build uh, where you can see a big knowledge map of all the information that come from the, the TED collection. So you can navigate uh, all the talk, and you can see there is some cluster, some talk are close to each other because they talk about the same topics. And here is a big list of the most important topics emerge, uh, ranking in function to the, no, the frequency of this topic in all this collection. So every time you touch a topic, you can see uh, the cluster emerge in the map. But this is a more friendly way with, uh, to interact with this data, like just uh, ask something, very natural. Let's make this question, a question like, uh, what is uh, the relation between money and happiness? I think it's interesting topics. And ba -ba, there is some result. So there is a collection of four videos. Let's see just the first two. You spend that money on consumer goods, which you hope you'll enjoy using. But then the money's gone, you have to work hard to get more, spend more, and to maintain the same level of happiness, it's kind of a hedonic treadmill. You never get off. And you so we see it in religions and self-help books that money can't buy happiness. And I want to suggest today that, in fact, that's wrong. And that... <laughs> So in this interface, we are different components. Like uh, we can have an overview of the, uh, all the top, all the content of the speech. Uh, but the sentence is very cool. We have a timeline where we can explore other entity and topics that it, uh, this author was talking about during all the speech. So we can activate a new way to jump from one talk to another by using this uh, uh, dynamic topic trendy timeline. And uh, you can understand the power of this type of technology uh, in many other fields, not just uh, using this type of uh, information. So in some way, the dream uh, a few years ago from the 50 to build uh, this uh, machine able to talk with us, to answer to our question, is close to be done. Probably we will never go to the point where the machine will uh, direct an orchestra, not so soon, but uh, we're there. And uh, OK, we cannot be too optimistic, honestly. There are still so many te uh, technology to build, but the question answer is in the right direction. And I want to close my speech by a, a deep uh, insight in this uh, technology. The way to, if you image a good way to really create a connection between us and machines, is probably this type of a question and answer. I ask you something in a natural language, you tell me something in a natural language. So IBM is a pioneer in this field. So you remember probably a few years ago, the Joe Party game is a very famous game. And you ask, do you know this game? Someone of you know this game? OK, few of you. Essentially, it's like a twist that use uh, the traditional type of games. There is an uh, answer, and you have to find the question. You can see Watson was uh, um, the winner, obviously. Otherwise, I was not here <laughs> and uh, using this example. So it was a winner. And, uh, but the problem is, uh, if you have this question, so in 1898, uh, uh, Portugal celebrated the 14th anniversary of these explorers' ar arrival in India. So the answer can be this. So uh, one supporting evidence can be this, because we find inside the word Portugal, uh, Portugal, Portugal, the, uh, India, India, uh, and uh, in May, there is May. So the machine works in this way. It matches pro possible answer with a possible with a, with a new question. But the point is, uh, this is a wrong answer. It's not Gary. The right answer is, uh, is Vasco da Gama. Why? 
because uh, you have to build something more. You cannot just uh, match uh, this keyword. You have to use uh, system to match uh, uh, the timing, so data match technology. You have to create uh, this uh, geo technology. So now we know that India is cap at beach. Now we know that this timing is this timing. And the machine now is able to give you the right answer. So it's only math. There is no spirituality. There is no really uh, nothing more than just math. So, this is the end of my speech. I want just to tell you that to go, now we are in an area of semantic, so we are able to identify topics, but we, can, we are so far away to be in an area of narrative where the machine is really able to understand what we are writing, our way to communicate. But uh, let's forget that this is a nightmare to have a machine like us. What is the reality today? There is a machine able to work with us because understand our semantic. It is able to support us in all our daily work activity or hobby. And let's use this technology because it is the best way to really understand all the book that I buy every six months and all the book and paper and content that you read every day. Thank you so much.